of Vesuvius Town Council, uh, January the 16th, 2017 at 7 a.m. in Council Chambers. And it's very nice to see... Pardon? Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> it's very nice to see so many people here. Uh, I just want to thank you very much, all of you, for taking the time to put together a presentation and uh, come to Council and um, and really just let us know what it is that you're thinking, and we certainly do appreciate it. To Before we start, I just want to give a little bit of context to this evening. This is the third time that uh, Asuya's Town Council has uh, done this type of an open forum for people to present. Um, it's th This is just the third year that we've done it. It's been done in other ways. We feel that this is um, an interesting way of having people um, look at, listen to each other, explain to us what it is that uh, they're so passionate about, and why we should consider it um, in our budget procedure. You are going to hear from um, our CAO and our finance uh, director about what has been done already and the amount of time that we have spent uh, going through um, the budget deliberations and trying to come up with the best um, way to uh, to you know to deal with things in our town. So I just want to tell you first of all that you are not. This is not a decision-making meeting tonight. We are not going to decide tonight how much money people are going to get. We're going to take it back. We've already spent one long day going through all of the things that our directors have uh, provided us input on about what they think are important um, for the town. And we'll now take what you have to say and look at it in the same light. Um, it is, we are going to um, spend quite a bit of time over the next two months looking at all of the things that might have an impact on the town's budget. I just want to tell you for one thing that um, when we looked at what's already in the budget and what we, we do provide uh, in terms of donations and things that we feel are important to the town of Asuyas, $70,000, and it may be increased to 80 this year if the budget passes, go to grant and aid applications. And some of you, when you make your presentation and when you listen to what other people have, may you may feel that that's the best um, way to approach this is to apply for a grant and aid, and you can do that, and that will come out in the next month. The reason we're suggesting that people um, tell us now what it is that they think we should be including in the budget is that that gives us kind of uh, an overall figure to to work from. So grant made seventy to eighty thousand. Um, Destination Asuyas gets one hundred and sixty three thousand out of the budget. The Museum Society fifty one thousand, and the Desert Center. Fifteen thousand. So those are those are already set aside. So some of the things that that you may be asking for would be in addition to. Sometimes we take money from our resort municipality funding, and you know that we are one of fourteen uh, municipalities in the province. We're not sure whether we're going to continue to get funding from uh, the RMI because uh, we have it actually until March of this of 2017. We hope, and we've made a, a very strong plea, all of the mayors from the 14 municipalities to um, the ministers at UBCM. We think they were listening, but we're not absolutely sure that that's going to happen. Some of the things that you might suggest could go into our five-year plan, and, um, and that, that's adjusted every year depending on the, what things need to come to the forefront first, and some of them could go into the business plan. So there are many ways to deal with this. Sometimes there just is, we just can't fit it into our budget to deal with everything that you have. So please know that we are here to listen to you. 
We are here to, uh, and we certainly appreciate the time that you've taken to come out and tell us about your interests and uh, your passions. But please know that we will ask questions, we will take it back and look at it in the future. Okay? Uh, just, Madam sorry, Lord, just absolutely. A, 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 a please minor do. correction in the budget process. Uh, we were at 60000 for the grant and aid. And an increase to 70. Pardon Not me? Not 70, I wrote down 70 and 80. Okay. <laughs> we, uh, we're at, at, we're at, at 60, and it could go up to 70. That's what we've, we've uh, thought about adding another 10. Thank you. So um, one of the things, and Andrew uh, phoned me last week and said, um, you know, what's this going to look like? What are you doing? Can you tell me something that you might have uh, added to the budget that hadn't been considered. And the first thing that popped into my mind was the dog park. And it wasn't exactly a handle this way because it was about four or five years ago. But I do remember that it was a uh, local citizen who came to, and I believe if it was, it was Councillor Rhodes who's on the line, and, uh, and said, um, I, we think that there should be a dog park. Well, you know that we definitely have a dog park now. So it was that type of thing which wasn't really on our radar, we hadn't considered it, that was a good example of something that came forward from an open meeting or from asking for input. Okay. And speaking of Andrew, yeah. uh, Mr. Stuckey, this is what happens when you show up late. You sit at the front of the class and you face everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So what I'm going to do is read a statement from the chair, and then we will carry on with the with the rest of the of the meeting. I just had to add my two bits worth in there first. So I'd like to welcome members of the community who are present in council chambers and those who are viewing the meeting via live video streaming. This special open meeting is convened to allow the public to make presentation to council respecting the Town of Vesuvius 2017 budget process. Every person present shall be given a reasonable opportunity to provide input to the Town of Vesuvius budget process. No one will be discouraged or prevented from making his or her views known. However, it is important that you restrict your remarks to matters relative to the budget process and also respect the conduct of the meeting by addressing your comments through the chair. When speaking, please proceed to the microphone and commence your remarks by clearly stating your name and address. If they wish, members of council may ask you questions following your presentation. And um, there's three of us sitting here, but Councillor Rhodes is on the line from Yuma, and we were expecting Councillor Youngberg, and I don't think she's on the line. Councillor Youngberg, are you there? No, she's not yet. She may uh, join us. She's down in Vegas. So there you go. Um, and uh, members of council may ask you questions following your presentation. However, the function of council at this public meeting is to listen to you and receive your input rather than debate the merits of your submission. It is requested that presentations by members of the public be limited to a maximum of five minutes each. And Mrs. Hilson is going to keep, because we've got so many people in different presentations, she's going to keep track and she will let you know when the five minutes is finished. Some of you may not take that long. If a person has additional information that he or she is unable to provide within that time frame, he or she will be given further opportunity to address council once all other interested members of the public have been heard a first time. Thank you for your cooperation. And I'm going to, uh, there's no late item, so I'm going to ask our chief administrative officer uh, to... The budget presentation, or is that, no, it says Chief Administrative Officer here. Well, I apologize, <laughs> it's the Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Zackel. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. Um, so the budget is being presented to Council with a 1.99% increase to property taxes. This is an increase of $46,281 in tax-based revenue. New construction property taxation is $40,545. 0.43% of the increase is going towards increasing grant and aid funding. 1.56% of the increase is going to offset the net operating costs. 
Um, debt payments for the fire hall will start in 2017, um, as the boring will take place in the spring of 2017. This is paid for by the Town of Osuyas, Osuyas Rural Fire Protection District, and the Osuyas Indian Band. Salaries and wages overall budget is increased by $179,900. In 2017, janitorial services for civ civic buildings, parks, washrooms, and landfill waste scale are all being now done by QP staff. One salaried employee in finance started in June of 2016 and it's fully budgeted for in 2017. There is a reduction of one part-time water ambassador of $20,000. And wages have increased 1.75% with a 0.25% increased overhead. Garbage and recycling fees are proposed to increase by 2.5% for a balance of $130.10, and this is up from $126.93 last year. The increase is to account for the transportation cost, or transportation consumer price index, pardon me, the TCPI. Uh, for the garbage and recycling collection contract and with some subsidization from our uh, MMBC revenues. Sewer rates are proposed to increase by $3.57 annually for a single family residence. The annual cost for a single family residence will increase to $241.44, which is a 1.5% increase in the town. And the amount for the Area A is $334.44, which is a 1.08% increase for Area A. This is a $20,400 increase in revenues is needed to maintain the same level of funding available for capital projects. Underwater rates, proposed to increase by $1.54 annually for single family residents to bring the balance annually to $335.54, which is a 0.46% increase to the other water rates. This will generate an additional 7,000 in revenues and is needed to increase the funding available for capital projects. The water fees for a town property is comprised of a user fee plus a parcel tax, so the two combined are $395.54. For water district, the proposed increase is $11.52 annually for single family residents, which will bring the same balance up to $395.52, which is a 3% increase to the water district rates. And this will also generate $15,800 in increased revenues and is also needed to increase the funding available for capital projects. Some significant operating expenditure increases and decreases. Wages and benefits have increased by $179,900 to bring it to a, an annual balance of $3,330,250. Council stipend has increased by $7,630. An increase in auditing costs of $2,580. Insurance costs have increased by $9,590. Grants and aids are increasing by $10,000. Transit services administration is being transferred to the RDOS. The fire department operating budget is increased by $5,050. Development services is increased by $6,370 for the enhancement of advertising salaries. Um, equipment financing um, through municipal finance authority were adding the replacement of a two-ton truck um, with crane and a sweeper fan assembly in 2017. Under landfill, the budget went up by 31000 in 2017. And this is to account for the increases in contracts for consumer price index, transportation consumer price index, and QP taken over the waste scale services at the landfill. Under parks wages, increased by $45,760 to account for the increase in cleaning for parks washrooms and reallocation of public works staff. Under debt charges, this is increasing by $303,083 to account for the spring borrowing for the fire hall construction project. Under general operating expenditures, less transfers to other governments, transfers to reserves, resort municipality, contingencies, and capital project expenditures, this is increasing by $398,193 for a total operating budget of $5.3,078,263 for 2017, which is an 8% increase. The majority of that is the fire hall debt. Sewer operating expenditures have increased by $30,090 for a balance of $1,225,855 um, for 2017, which is a 2.52% increase. Water operating expenditures is increased by $8,480 for a balance of $1,668,825 for 2017, 
which is a 0.51% increase. For our transfers to reserves under our general fund, we'll be transferring 11500 to the marina. This is being funded from marina lease revenues. Under fire department equipment, $28,070 is being tra transferred to reserves through a joint reserve fund. Under museum land restoration, 10000 is being transferred in. Under waste recycling initiatives, 10000 is being transferred in. And under water meter reserve fund, we're transferring 125000 into reserves. We also, within our budget, we have a contingency allowance built in for the general fund of 50000 sewer fund of 30000 and the water fund of 20000 The funds that were available for capital expenditures under our general operating fund in 2017, the balance is $516,166, and this is up from $504,193 in 2016. For the sewer operating funds, or for sewer operating funds, pardon me, for capital projects, the balance is $449,885, and this is just down slightly from $454,065 in 2016. And under water operating funds available for capital projects, $469,335 is what's available, and this is up slightly from $448,135 in 2016. And I'll pass it over to Barry RCAO. And I just want to say that if that sounds like it's confusing, it is to us as well. We think that Mr. Zackel's done a terrific job. Please know that that has not been finalized, that budget, because, of course, we're waiting for other things to be put into it. So that's just where we're at at this, at this point. Mr. Romanko. Thank you, Mary McCordoff. Uh, the Director of Finance has provided Council and the public with an overview of the financial changes proposed in the 2017 Budget and Capital Plan. The 2017 to 2020 Business Plan identifies projects uh, for implementation in 2017 and plan for future years. The business plan provides transparency to future community investments, resource allocation, projects, and staff activities. The business plan must be fluid enough to respond to emerging events in the community and council direction. A part of this meeting and part of what you input into in tonight may be a part of, of this and future business plans. Council approves the 2017 operating budget, a five-year capital plan, and a four-year business plan. The business plan reinforces the delivery of core services and service levels. The business plan also identifies special projects and investments that Council is considering. I'm taking this opportunity to highlight some of the key activities proposed in this year's budget. And just referring back to the numbers that uh, uh, Mr. Zackel talked about in terms of, of uh, funds available for capital ex expenditures in general operating funds, water and sewer funds, from those funds, these are some projects that we've identified that would uh, go into the uh, into, into activities into the budget this year. Starting first in general capital, uh, parks uh, and, and parks. So we have uh, the completion of the residential lots on the Richter property, which is the remaining portion of the fire hall property, a playground at the Splash Park, desert park uh, building improvements, public works building upgrades, Canal Trail update grades that will see the paving from 100th Avenue to 116th Avenue and lighting infrastructure from the Trailhead parking lot at 62nd Avenue to Highway 3, a new washroom at Legion Beach, dog park upgrades, outdoor pickleball court support, and a, and a cemetery columbarium. In terms of road infrastructure improvements, a 68th Avenue intersection improvement, a Finch Crescent uh, resurfacing north of 74th Avenue. In water and sewer, uh, a new water uh, supply main from Gyro Park to Holiday Inn. Water, Lakeshore uh, Drive water service extension and road improvements. A uh, twinning project that con continues for the rural area, and that's uh, uh, the major grant that we, we received last year, and then the, the, the matching portion comes out of our water budget. Uh, so water main replacement, a sewer main lift uh, reconstruction design pro uh, project design, uh, the Highway 3 storm uh, water control, 85th Street to Park Place, and cell number 3 liner replacement. Planning, in planning we are planning uh, an urban forestry plan and bylaw, 
an engineering assessment of this current building uh, with the, the move of the fire hall of the fire department out of this building. We're now looking at what is the next step for this building. Uh, is it uh, in uh, good enough shape for renovation and what are we going to do with the, uh, the area f that was the fire department? Downtown revitalization planning, preliminary design of a bike trail from Lakeshore Drive to Cottonwood Drive, final design of the Gyro Park Pier, and in terms of program and, uh, programming and staffing, there will be no changes to service levels and no additional staff added uh, this year. The administration will be involved in many more activities, however, these are some of the key highlights for 2017. And if you're knowing how much the, uh, is, is allocated to each one of these projects, you can go online and there is the, our, our capital and operational budget. And each one of these projects that I, that I mentioned and every one of the itemized uh, projects that we're considering, the dollar figures are there and the exact nature of the project has been highlighted in a, council, in a report the administration has done to council. So uh, there are copies of this available. Uh, if you want to stop by the office uh, and, and thumb through it, uh, you know, certainly it is a very, very, very public document. Thank you. Thank you very much to uh, both Mr. Zackel and Mr. Romanko. Uh, they've done a lot of work into um, uh, getting the budget to this stage so far. So we're now going to go on to the, um, to the speakers list. And, um, and as you heard, we will allow five minutes for each speaker. We'll ask you to come up to the microphone, state your name and your address. And, um, and I know that some of the things that you have, um, that you're going to present, you've given to us already. Some people just brought things in tonight and some may be um, just speaking off the cuff and that's okay too, whatever works for you. Uh, so it'll be five minutes and I'm going to go um, and the people were so uh, keen to get here that they were standing outside the door before I got here. At, <laughs> that was at 6.30. So they have signed in first. So we're going to ask them to come up to the microphone and, uh, and speak first. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Councillor. My name is Carol Taylor. My address is 12317 Pinehurst Place. And I am the Pickleball Canada Ambassador here in Isoyas, as well as Isoyas Pickleball Club's Committee Chair. Pickleball is the fastest growing sport in North America. It has become widely and rapidly accepted and is now taught in schools, universities, and community centers here and around the world. Pickleball is presently advertised as one of the activities promoted by participation for Canada's 150-year celebration. Pickleball is number 44 on the 150 activities listed. Our Pickleball Club has worked very hard and been most successful in a number of our objectives aimed towards making Pickleball a great experience here in Isuias. At present, we have 120 players who live in and around our town, plus over 60 visitors using our courts each year, which, by the way, is great for our tourism. Although we have courts times every day of the week, our courts are still crowded. This sport really is an asset to our town. Outdoor courts would provide yet another venue for all pickleball enthusiasts. We estimate this project will cost a total of $30,000. To pay this $30,000, we understand that the town of Osoyas may be offering us $15,000 and RDOS plans to offer $10,000. This leaves us with a shortfall of $5,000. Our original intent was to apply to New Horizons for a grant for that shortfall. Our problem with all this is timing. We are required to put forth this application to Council before we know if we will receive any funds from New Horizons. If we do not receive the funds from New Horizons, this project cannot be go ahead. So we are asking the Town, can you offer us an additional $5,000 which would ensure the project go ahead in the spring as planned? If the New Horizons grant does come through, then their uh, $5,000 could be used to pay for spectator benches bleachers. 
At this time, I would like to turn our presentation over to Friend Hamilton, who is one of our committee members and has been working hard to gather information regarding costs for preparing outdoor courts. Thank you. Your Worship, our councillors and staff, my name is Dr. Fred Hamilton. My address is 10435 87th Street. Today is the appropriate day to start this presentation with the words of Martin Luther King. <laughs> I have a dream. <laughs> <laughs> you have a busy night. I will be succinct. Our club is very young with many members and we are very enthusiastic. We see a great need for outdoor pickleball courts in our community. We lag behind the progress other local communities have made. <clears throat> Peachland is committing $266,000 to improve their tennis courts and to add two pickleball courts. That's about 10 times our need. Penticton has spent $104,000 for four pickleball courts. That's three times our need. Christina Lake spent fifty-five thousand dollars for four pickleball, for three pickleball courts, twice our need. We can spend less and provide outdoor courts for our community. We can construct four quality pickleball courts of dimensions recommended by the Canadian Pickleball Association for only thirty thousand dollars. What a bargain. <laughs> an amenity to please local players, an amenity to attract tourists in the shoulder season months. You along with Rural Area A have generous, generously budgeted funds for the project. We are asking for a further $5,000 to ensure the completion of the courts to a high standard that is deserving of our community. We worry that without the supplementary grant, we will have insufficient funds. We worry we may then have to cut corners, cheapen the standard of construction, leading to an inadequate and disappointing community asset. We have reassurance from other towns the community outdoor courts get lots of use. If we are to fulfill our obligation as a special resort municipality, it behooves us to provide a needed amenity of a high standard, something to be proud of. Such a facility will benefit locals and tourists. If built, we promise to organize a tournament attracting out-of-towners <coughs> on May long weekend. We believe that this grant is a one-time grant. Thank you for your attention. Should you wish more detailed information, we will make ourselves available to you. Thank you very much. Can I ask one question? Uh, if an outdoor court was constructed, is it possible to use it for any other sport, or is it only for pickleball? Is it the size of the like court? The is it the length? It's pretty much only for pickleball. Okay. Good. Council, anybody have any other? Councillor King. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I guess it's just looking at hmm. what convinces you we can do it so cheap compared to the prices of other towns. Uh, we are starting with a uh, asphalted area up there already. Hmm. Penticton and Grand Fork uh, started with green grass, so they had to dig the whole lot up. Okay. I, I was, uh, after getting <laughs> estimates and quotations, I was really quite surprised that we could do it so cheaply. Okay. I thought we would be in the sixty to 70000 range. Thank you. Good. <coughs> well, thank you very much. We know how passionate uh, you, you people are at um, coming early and getting... <laughs> <laughs> getting keen. <laughs> getting out early. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Um, and next is our serious gift cupboard. Um, Gay Horn is on here. Or is Gay going to speak? Good evening, Mayor Mercorda. Mm. Uh, 
counselors and attendees. Thank you for allowing us this time. I wrote this on January the 1st, not <laughs> knowing about this meeting. My, I'm early, really early. So it was a note to bring you up to date on something you all approved of. So I will read you the note and my request. The Asuya's gift cupboard has been in operation since August the 15th, 2016. And this is just an update on how it was used by the folks in this community. We've given out over 300 toothbrushes, a lot of toothpaste, band-aids, hair ties, feminine products, deodorant, diapers, face cloths, toys, kitchen utensils, socks, scarves, mitts, pens, pocket calendars, keychains, pens, notepads, cards, saran wrap, baggies, coloring books and crayons. Many more small items have been supplied as well. No sharp objects, <coughs> nothing with an alcohol base, just everyday necessities. The interesting thing about this endeavor is that it has become so much more than it was ever intended to be. We handed out 11 sleeping bags, finding folks that needed them in a variety of places. Now, these people don't come to us. We went looking for them. We handed out blankets, sweaters, heavy gloves, Tim Horton gift cards, and we supplied transitional housing and with beds, dressers, clothing for women in emergency housing, bedding for seven queen-size beds, coffee, and two turkey dinners. All of this was donated by local town people and a few businesses made us their charity of the month, Beyond Beauty and the Seniors Exercise Group. This has indicated to us the need for more in the way of assistance to our homeless and disenfranchised. There are no emergency shelters, no outlets for the simple things like soup and a sandwich for our hungry. Not everyone that uses the cupboard is a homeless person. Many peoples living here are simply too poor to buy food and pay rent. We even made local couples Christmas, which Santa completely forgot a little four-year-old child. Well, a call went out, and we came together and made it magical for this couple. We couldn't have done it without the community. Uh, there was a chain of people that just continue to donate to the cupboard here uh, of people in need and share that with us, and we get together, and whatever needs to be done, it's done. These kind-hearted folks are referred to <coughs> as our Earth Angels, as they are always ready to assist. Others in businesses that continue to believe in this concept, we always make mention so that the local people understand businesses are involved as well and we'd like people to support them. Now we've had a couple of instances where someone was literally stealing everything and not out of need but out of greed. We think we've stopped that. Next came wanton vandalism. The perpetrator or perpetrators took things, broke them, smashed things, littered the grounds with the efforts and this cowardly act just simply was accomplished by wanton disregard for what we're trying to do. We cleaned it up, we restocked the cupboard, and went on. The last incident thus far was someone cut the wires to our light, stripped it down, broke it in three pieces, and threw it all over the place. We again cleaned it up, restocked, and we have had since then the offer from an electric company to come and rewire and put in a new light, for which we're very grateful. We've chosen not to do it right away. Uh, but in the end, in the grand scheme of things, these acts have been tiresome and irritating, but they are by no means going to deter us. Now, we've had cash donations from time to time. They're minimal, they're small, but whatever, we're very grateful for these. And that is what we use to buy items that we need. We have an accounting of every penny that's been offered and receipts for every penny spent. What I would like to ask this council and Mayor McCord of is for a small amount that we could use towards buying supplies for the rest of the year. We believe that spring and summer are going to be very, very busy and we will be used in the proper way. Now, um, I, I timed, I, I, I spaced it out and I thought $100 a month where we could build up stock so it would come to $1,200 a year. I didn't know that there would be this meeting that I could actually ask you for this, so I was really coming begging. <laughs> I'm still going to beg. That's <laughs> not a problem. Anyway, if this does not fit in with your budgetary efforts, we would accept what you feel is appropriate, and we would do so with gratitude. So on behalf of Brenda DeRoche, Jen Shields, the gift covered, we thank you. We thank you for this time. And if there are any questions, be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. We certainly appreciate uh, the great efforts that uh, the three of you have done over the last, with I know a lot of community help too, over the last six months. Um, 
Can I just ask one question? I believe you have some drop-off bins or something in town, and I've got we've got a list outside of things that you want, but no place that somebody came in they could um, drop them off. Should they be phoning you? That's the only thing I've got on there is your phone okay. number. Okay. What what we've done is we've repeatedly uh, had it. Uh, Andrew's posted it. The Loop has posted it. It's been in the paper thanks to Richard McGuire. We continually post it. We've left notes around. I sorry when I dropped off the list, the wish list with you, I did not drop oh, off yeah. a list of of. Um, donation spots. So, so you're telling me I haven't read the paper. Is that what it is? That's Maybe. correct. That, that's <laughs> correct. That's correct. Uh -huh. but, <laughs> not alone. Because we have many people coming up to us and they're saying, well, yeah. where, where are the donation bins? And we say, Troy's Grill, uh, the Hearing Center on Main Street, um, or Sue's Times, uh, Martha, um, South Valley Chiropractic. Oh, Sun, Sunshine Valley Chiropractic. Who and Unity. Hmm? Unity. Oh, Unity. I'll Jamie. get the list tomorrow and put it up. On yeah, the we'll get you a We've list. We've got the list outside of what you like. Right. We yeah. just didn't have that. We'll, okay. we'll get you that list ASAP. Thank you. And what about if someone wishes to donate cash? Because to me, that would, you know, there are people that it. donate. <laughs> <laughs> The thing, the thing is, the reason I say that so yeah. quickly and you laugh, yeah. uh, my husband's a chartered accountant and he's doing the books. Okay. And so since day one, whatever money has been given, I take yes. it and it's recorded. Sure. And then so money in, money out. So that if anybody wants to know how this money's sure. being spent to the penny, I can do that. I think that's a really good idea. I think yeah. that's absolutely necessary to oh, do I it do that way. Oh, I do believe so. Well... Um, anyone else from council and councillor Rhodes you're on the line too please jump in if there's any questions or anything that you would like to say um, we certainly thank you very much okay um, we certainly thank you for all that you do and we wish continued success and we will certainly take your letter and look at it um, in terms of uh, everything else in the budget so thank you, you for this opportunity okay. we really appreciate it thank, thank you, you for coming forward Okay, the next one is uh, Birgit Arnstein from the uh, Asuyas Lake Water Quality, I believe. Yes. Yes, one of is. the many hats. Yes. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor McCourtoff, uh, councillors, staff, and guests. Um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak with you this evening. The Asuyas Lake Water Quality Society has been serving the community for over 25 years. We've been providing public education with a focus on protecting the lake from dangerous pesticides, invasive species such as quagga and zebra mussels, and shoreline erosion from various means. We have provided this information through our website, pamphlets, and other printed materials, as well as public meetings. Uh, in May 2016, we held our first Osuyas Lake Appreciation Day uh, to celebrate our 20th 25th anniversary. The Osiris Lake uh, Waters, uh, our, our prestigious list of knowledgeable speakers such as Richard Bosanich, Anna Warwick Sears, Arnie Marchand, and indeed Mayor McCourthoff, uh, who's a member of the IJC, highlighted the importance of the lake and talked about the various ways to protect it. Our society must now work to modernize our website so that we can continue to put timely topical information on it. Uh, to do this, we must hire a professional webmaster. Our, our board has become very, has some very talented computer savvy people on it, but it takes that additional professional help to get the job done. Um, our board's also identified that we need to update our pamphlet, which was made many years ago. Um, certainly preventing invasive uh, mussels entering our lake must be included in the text. Uh, we've decided to go with rack cards as opposed to pamphlet this year, but have wider uh, dissemination of them because we can spread them all over the Okanagan. Um, again, this will take professional design and certainly some printing costs. 
We, we would therefore like to request $2,000 to enable us to make these important educational upgrades. Our existing budget is used to continue operating and maintaining the boat, the motor, and the sensitive testing equipment. Um, I'd be willing to answer any questions. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you who I was and where I live. <laughs> May I back up? I'm Bergen Einstein, 8019 Vedette Drive. Apologies. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, can I ask, are you planning to do another Lake Osuya's Day this year? That's not in the, no, there's a lot of work. Not. I just was wondering. And um, has it been, have you considered joining up with, uh, say, another group like Oasis and Lisa Scott, who deals with invasive species and having the logo on there? I'm just wondering if that would be a way to get your message out and not necessarily Those, with a lot of money. But Yeah, well, we, we might be able to sort of partner to some extent, but I think the Water Quality Society needs its own Absolutely. information pamphlet. Okay. Um, sure. And then the website, we've done some uh, preliminary checking to see how much it would cost. Um, just, we have a website. Um, it needs to be upgraded, and we need to get someone that can go in there and help us, and then we will use our computer-savvy people to do the input once we get that established. And that's $1,500 right there. And, yeah. Well, yeah, um, That's one guesstimate. We certainly uh, appreciate the hard work of the uh, Suez Lake Water Quality Society, and I see that it's time to renew memberships. I think you sent yes. me something the other day which was a reminder, so I will get right on it. <laughs> I've been a member for many years. Um, so we will certainly take this under advisement. I believe last year you asked for some money for to the motor or the... No, that was for the... I'm sorry. The that was for Lake Appreciation Day. Okay, Lake Appreciation Day. Yes. Okay, well, thank you very much. Anyone else have any questions? No? Okay. Thanks. Thanks thank you. <coughs> okay, next is the Rob Roche, and he's going to talk for a while. You may have to give him ten minutes. No. He's got two. <laughs> no, that's well-deserved, but I'm going to keep this <laughs> brief as I can. Uh, for the record, yeah, Rob Roush, uh, 59 Harbor Key Drive. And please see me standing here wearing multiple hats again. Mm -hmm. um, as every time I stand here, you've got, to, you've got to be getting tired of seeing me. Um, first of all, thanks for the uh, opportunity to address you again, Mayor Council. Um, and I should also add to that again, thank you for shelving the repurposing study back in October um, to even make this conversation possible. Um, so you recall I was here a little over a month ago, uh, December 5th Council meeting, um, asking you to support our grant applications to the BC Air Access Program. Uh, you did that. Uh, that's fantastic. I, I alluded at the time, I, I flat out said that the, the Airport Society could cover all of the seed money for those grants. I did allude to at the time that we would be back later to ask you to participate in that, so that's, that's what I'm doing here today. I will not bore you with the history of the airport. You're all thoroughly familiar with it. I'm not going to pound on the merits of it. Uh, suffice to say, this, this is a unique opportunity in that it, it is pretty much a 3P, and you'll see as I get into this uh, with Destination Associates participating, ODES participating, hopefully you folks participating, and then, of course, the province taking on the lion's share. The money that uh, uh, us as locals put in will be leveraged to four times that amount, uh, about $250,000 uh, from the province, exactly $250,000 from the province if we're successful in getting these grants. Um, so just to back up a little bit, the BC Rural Dividend Fund was the first thing that we applied to back in October, uh, BC Rural Dividend Fund being used for basically paper projects, uh, uh, consultants, uh, feasibility studies, that type of thing. Uh, we have not heard back from uh, from them yet. We, we consider that a good thing because they usually say no within six weeks, and it's been more than eight. Um, that's an 80-20 scheme. Uh, that's uh, 10,000 from uh, seed money that would get us uh, uh, 50,000 or 40,000 additional dollars, 50,000 total that we we would use for an airport master plan. The BC Air Access Program. You'll recall we had uh, four separate applications. Um, three we consider to be uh, safety or security issues. There was the paint refresh, seed money being 5000 That's the painting on the, uh, on the airport uh, markings, the runway markings. Second being the uh, apron expansion improvement with tie-downs, seed money there being 15000 Perimeter fencing, uh, seed money being 20000 And then finally runway extension perhaps to the south uh, where it's already uh, graded and preloaded. 
Um, these funds would get us uh, 210000 through the BCR Access Program and another fifty through the BC Rural Dividend Fund. ODES has already put in $35,000 towards the project at large, um, believing it could be a significant economic driver th for the community, obviously. That went to a uh, geotech report and an optical assessment study and an environmental, uh, or sorry, an eco economic impact study. Um, obviously, we, we're putting skin in the game because we believe it's a worthwhile project, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking, I guess, uh, I'm, um, for the same from the town to put some skin in the game. And uh, now that you've actually recognize it, it has value and, and, um, and, and, and perhaps move it forward. We are happy to continue to put funds towards the grants, um, but we think it sends a larger message to the community at large and, of course, to the province when we're asking for these funds if there's more, more uh, players locally, being Destination of Soyuz, ODES, and, and you folks. Um, so the, the, the funding model, that I, th I think you guys got packages, did you not, earlier today? Just this Just morning we did, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, they, our, some of it's up here on the screen. There you go. Yeah. So at our Economic Development Advisory Committee meeting on uh, Friday in the Destination Soyuz Boardroom, um, that <coughs> committee made a recommendation, unanimous recommendation to the board at large that DO kick in $16,000 from its active budget. That was approved by the board just today. Uh, so that would be 16 from them. That's 20% of the total seed money needed. Uh, Odes would put in an equal amount, and we're asking the town of Asoyas for $48,000. That 80 would get us, as I said, an additional $250,000. That would pretty much make the airport usable. It would no longer <coughs> languish in its present state. It uh, would pretty much pick up right where Glenn Manziak in the previous iteration of DO had left off and uh, moved the ball downfield. Um, there's obvious next steps. Th these are obvious next steps. So we talked about an airport master plan um, using the BC Rural Dividend Fund. Uh, what we've outlined here in the uh, BCRX on the previous page, the BCR Access Program uh, applications are really obvious next steps. We don't need a master plan to know that you need a fence and an apron. That's kind of obvious. Um, I guess that's kind of all I have for you. I won't want to give too much more time. Um, you're very familiar with this. Do you have any? Questions, Jim. Councillor King. Yeah, thank you. I guess the question is, uh, per se, from the province, you only got part of the funding. Uh, would you still move forward? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, unfortunately, we missed the, the, the first two tranches. We might have had more success in getting more money from them if we'd kind of spread it out. We didn't have that luxury. Um, there's just too many question marks surrounding the project, but uh, no, we would. And that, and that's the, the the thing that muddies the water here. We haven't heard back. Uh, yes. So we're standing here asking you for money mm -hmm. that we won't necessarily be spending. <coughs> and I guess that kind of leads to my next question because we're kind of in budget time yeah. here and you have about four to six weeks before we kind of finalize the budget. It's pretty hard to give you money without hearing. It really from is. Your it really is. Granters. Yeah. And I. I that's for you folks yeah. to decide. You know, okay. I, I I look at the capital plan. I'm like, well, oh, I put money from there and I put money from <laughs> there. But that's 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 for you folks to decide. I'm just making the ask. Rob, is there an indication of when you'll hear back? <sighs> I, I wish. I mean, yeah. it's uh, from what we're told, it's it's usually uh, no more than four months. But that's to the limit of your planning. I mean, it'd be like the last day. Kind of thing. We're hoping to hear back in the BC World Dividend Fund within the next couple of weeks. Um, yeah, would they be contacting you or would they be contacting the town? Do you know, Mr. Romanko? They would be no. contacting them directly. Okay. Yeah, and you had a question? Yes, I just had a question relative to the destination of Soyuz funding. Just for clarity, that money is coming out of the economic development budget that's provided to DO by the, by town. the town. I believe that was where we were thinking the money. The, account, the accountant's right behind me here. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not coming from the MRDT funds because I know there was a big pitch so. that this, the airport was uh, was a tourism asset, right. and uh, the MRDT funds would be tourism-related dollars. Yeah, no, I think, correct me if I'm no, wrong, it was, Peter. It was uh, earmarked from economic development money. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Rhodes, you okay? Did you have any? I, you have, I haven't heard you jump in yet, so I'm assuming you will when you want to. Yes, I will, Mayor McCord. Thank you very much. I'm just fascinated by all of the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of a delay in yeah, the fall, right. which is why we have to wait. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. So thank you very much for that one. Are you going to jump into your next one now? I'll just keep standing here. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. 
total switch of thought. This is not airport, this is Harbor Key. <laughs> yes, so I'm one of, uh, I'm going to guess, uh, 30 homes on Harbor Key Drive that are east of Cottonwood. Um, in reading the uh, 2017 budget and the five-year uh, capital plan, I, I noticed looking at the road and sewer improvements that that was not there. Um, you likely know that that road is, I'm going to say, the worst road in town for potholes, um, the condition of the street, and flooding. It doesn't form puddles. It floods. Like, we're talking six to eight inches of water full span across the street. Um, my neighbor across the street, when it rains hard, uh, the water runs right into his front entrance. Um, I mean, I blame the way it was built, but it's also because the road is crowned to run water off into uh, people's grass and landscaping and whatnot, which raises the next point. Um, not having storm sewer there, like other spots in town, um, is pushing it off into the groundwater. The bad thing about that location is there's water on three sides of that street, so you've got runoff from the pavement going straight into an ecologically sensitive area. So I guess I'm just making the argument that it should be on the uh, road improvement and sewer um, list there. I, I know you guys have talked about it in the past. It's not like it's a new, yes. you're, you're well aware of it. Um, and I think you'd probably be hearing from more of the residents on that street if they didn't all winter elsewhere. <laughs> There's not very many of us that are Jeez. around. You know, it's a tough life, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. I wish I was one of them, CJ. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't talk to him. He's down there for six weeks. So, <laughs> uh, um, Mr. Romanko, did you wish? Yes, to, yeah. just um, in that project is in our in, in the town has done a total road assessment of all the roads in 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 the town in terms of priority uh, for redevelopment, and there's a number of criteria, including uh, arterial roads versus neighborhood roads versus uh, you know the, the amount of traffic that it takes and that road ha has continually been pushed back in, in the planning process due to, due to other priorities and I, I see it's still here in, in, our, in our list. Uh, it is identified as a $725,000 project uh, and that uh, the, the uh, again uh, the, the source of revenue identified for that is borrowing and uh, so it's there uh, it's it's whether you know council would would want to do uh, a, a borrowing on that particular project, yeah. or whether any of the people along that road would like to contribute to it and move it up the ladder a little. We have we have a policy in place mm -hmm. re relating to uh, the, the uh, fixing of what we refer to as neighborhood roads, uh, where the community can. Uh, uh, the, the the benefactors of the of the improvement, in fact, would uh, be uh, we would do uh, a neighborhood improvement, which is which is often the case in in communities who uh, when there is a direct benefit and it's not an an arterial road or yeah. uh, uh, and only a direct benefit to a few, uh, it's usually handled in that particular manner. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we certainly appreciate your concerns, and uh, we and we have heard them before, not necessarily from you, but from other members I that live on the street. Yeah. So, yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next is the serious child care. Mayor and Council, my name is Karen Gregg. I am representing the Associates Child Care Centre this evening. And behind me is Sonia Rescat. She's one of our board directors. And Kara, Karen, I'm going to say her last name wrong, so <coughs> I'll just leap up. Um, the Associates Child Care uh, this year is going to be 20 years in the making. It was a community project um, built by community members and community sponsors. The centre currently offers three programs, a kids club, a uh, daycare, and an infant toddler program. And currently our present enrollment is 49, and we service about 45 to 50 families within the community and surrounding area. Uh, we have a wait list, which is ongoing as the fluctuation of employment is in the community. Um, this is a little early because a lot of grants are coming forth right now, so we've got a lot of applications out, and we heard this is a wish list, I thought, well, we'll jump in. Um, we have one project that's currently on the go, it's our Kids Club Program Playground, and we've secured the funding for the Resilient Surface under it. And the next one that we've targeted is the Resilient Surfacing for an Infant Toddler Playground. Um, currently, this, the outside play space they have is asphalt, 
and a grass hill, which isn't conducive to risks of falling and tumbling and scraping their knees and banging their heads. Um, so we'd like to to apply for the funding. It's uh, 950 square feet, and the cost that the center needs to come up with is $4,500. Um, the second one is our flooring. The building is now 20 years old, and the flooring upstairs and downstairs is 20 years old. <laughs> 50 children in and out. It's um, it's due to re be replaced. Uh, to replace both the flooring upstairs and downstairs is approximately twenty-seven to twenty-eight thousand dollars, and I think that's attached with the information we've provided. Um, the child care center is also looking at doing solar panels, um, engaging the children and the community in a renewable energy source in our community, um, and the big part is. The children learn about harvesting a renewable source, uh, how it affects our climate, uh, learning about the tech world, um, and the list is kind of endless. Um, thinking about the possibilities of employment options, educational components, it's huge. I'd like to share with Council that over the last two years, we've had two students from the SOE high, high School, um, excuse me, do their work, share experience um, that they do in the last two years of school. I will go ahead and complete their ECE education. And one is currently hired back, yay for us, and the next one is just being accepted into that program. Um, both of these young girls were students when I started at the Soyuz Child Care Center. When I started there and they're coming back, so um, the Child Care Center is a necessity for any community to be successful and it has to employ good staff, it has to be a well-operated center with good directors, with a good vision. Um, so when the council looks at allocating some funds, <laughs> we could definitely use some. Um, our operational costs cover the basics. Um, anything else that goes wrong, we have to go searching for grant. And when you drive by, you don't want to see something run down and shoddy. These children are going there. They are our future. and We really mean what we say and say what we mean. Thank you for your time. And, and thank you, and, I, and I've been in the child care center several times over the years, and, uh, and it looks like a, a fun place to be. So We don't uh, work, we play. <laughs> we play, and that's good. Play is the best thing that you can do for yeah. kids that are growing up. Councillor Campbell. Thank you, Mayor McCordoff. Um, for the resilient surfacing for the infant toddler program at the $4,500, that's just for surfacing? So that is um, through the... Tired stewardship program, so we have to come up with this, a half of what the cost is. So the initial cost is fifteen thousand. Um, I'm going to say fifteen thousand five hundred dollars. Right. And so we have to come up with half that cost. So part of it was the purchasing the equipment for it, which we've had for a year, but we can't put it out okay. because it has to meet licensing standards for falls, and after a certain height, it has to be. Right. So following those licensing re recommendations, this is the the best thing we can put down, and it'll last for at least another 15 to 20 years. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Um, Mr. Councillor King? When do you hope to hear from these grants? We have three out in the, in the world right now. Um, we were hoping sometime February, early March. And in that time, the SOAS grant comes out, so we'll also apply for that. For the grant need, yeah. absolutely, and and you know that's something that that uh, anybody should apply for. There is money for that. You, we we always get way more asks than we have money for, but we've why been not? recipients of it, and we have greatly Good. appreciated Good. it. It's helped offset a lot of costs for us. So. Okay. Did you have a question? Yeah, it's it, it, it about the grant. So I was just wondering, do you, do you recall where you were applying to, just so that? So we have applied to tell us to the South Okanagan uh, Smell Com Community Grant, um, Gaming Grant, and there's, I think, two others out there also that we've applied oh, okay. to. Okay. All right, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next is the Cactus Jalopies. Mr. Dell, are you going to come and speak? Hello, uh, thank you, and hello, Mayor McCordoff, councillors, staff, and guests and presenters. It's always nice to hear 
what everybody has to say. Are you accepting an award, Gary? <laughs> no, I'm not. Right. Just checking. And, Actually, and it is you nice. Know, you don't come to council it, chambers very often. And, you know, it's <laughs> interesting to hear what everybody else Well, and it say. is nice for everybody to hear what everybody else thinks is important and what mm -hmm. they're asking for. So and you're down to four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> hey. He's been here before. He knows yeah, how know. to do the it. For, the formal part is, I'm Gary Dale, and I live at 1619 Highway 97 in Nasuyas. And I'm here on behalf of the Cactus Jalopies. <coughs> My 2017 Cactus Jalopies Desert Wine Tour event will be Friday, June 2nd, Saturday, June 3rd, and then we drag race on Sunday, June the 4th. So just quickly through it, Friday, registration, winery tours, GF Customs Open House, welcome reception, Saturday, show and shine, Gyro Park, extreme motorcycle stunt show, we do a ladies' poker walk, entertainment, beer garden. It's just a fun full day. And Sunday is uh, wine country racing up at uh, the Asuyas Airport. And it's nice to know that the airport is still there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> this seems to be a problem. Okay. <laughs> so 2017 will be our 12th year of planning, hosting this entertaining event. And uh, as I've said before, you know, J.F. Lanier, who's quite... Uh, big in the custom car field was the one who felt that Asuyas really was the place or had everything we needed to put on an event. And, um, you know, I, I think just to sort of point out where JF is in this uh, industry, um, 2016 we had a custom Studebaker Avante that JF arranged to come here and uh, just thumbing through the magazine rack. Hot Rod Magazine, which is the largest circulating custom car magazine in North America, is featuring that car this month. So oh. I think with headline, Dare to be Different. So you could have seen it last year at our show, or you can pick up the magazine. So um, as I said, we worked very c closely with Gail Scott, who's no longer here, Destination Suyas, 2015, 2016, to really build a five-year plan, try and figure out where we're going to go. So, of course, she uh, helped us write, uh, you know, our little purpose statement. So, to create a fun, exciting, memorable, signature off-season family visitor attraction event that will economically benefit Asuyas businesses and put Asuyas on the map as one of the best car shows in the Pacific Northwest, an event not to be missed. Um, so, we, Gail helped us with a five-year plan. 2016, we'd hoped to attract about 250 cars. Uh, total car count was almost 300. Some of those are made up with some of the Area 27 uh, drag race cars uh, that aren't actually registered. We registered about around 270. Um, 2015, 2016, we really tried to get an accurate count of how many people attended the event and um, through Gail and I think last year Darlene I mean we're confident in saying that you know there's 5,000 people during the day coming and um, walk through and look at what's going on so this year we'd like to up that a little bit it'd be nice to see 6,000 people um, where it's going to go it's hard to say a few of us actually this year went down to Victoria to what was called Deuce Days they had 1,100 cars filled downtown Victoria. They just filled the whole Inner Harbor, you name it, in front of the legislative buildings. I think two sailings of the Coho Ferry were actually sold out to cars that came up from California and parts of the U.S. So I don't know if we'll get to 1,100 cars, but that would mean road closures on, I think, quite a few streets. <laughs> um, an event that's always unique, and I, it's sort of become one of our signature uh, events, is the motorcycle show, which we hold three times on Saturday. I guess because the show is just, that day is a free event. Uh, we have had uh, the high school down there by donation collecting money. So that show, we figure this year, is going to cost us about $5,500, and it's three shows, 30 minutes long, and it just seems to be very popular. So for 2017, the Cactus Jalopy Society is requesting $5,500 to make the Cactus Jalopy's Desert Wine Tour a must 
attend event again in 2017. So that's my So thank you very much. We certainly understand. Uh, we've been at the car shows for a few years, and so we know that uh, um, what it is as a mother. I don't like lit watching those kids on those motorcycles, but um, I know that they're very talented and very, very much daredevils, aren't they? Councillor Campbell. Thanks, Gary. I really don't have a lot of interest in cars, you know that. But no. Um, <laughs> is, is, is there CJ, are you there? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is there a thought to outgrowing the area where you are and where what that would look like as far as a different location? or It, looked like, it just looked like it was maxing out. Uh, right. Uh, I think... One of the things when we were in Victoria, we were very impressed with how they parked cars because 1,100 cars is a lot of cars. And the committee started at 3 in the morning down there to park all these cars. And I mean, they, I mean, I, I think from our point of view, we can park a little tighter. So make we, better use of the space. We let a lot of the guys just kind of park and, you know, they, they don't want to get too close. But, um, and, um, Actually, Gerald Davis just came to our last meeting on last Wednesday, and we talked a little more about actually just, you know, street closures, whether there's just a, we should better use, we had applied last year for road closure on um, Spartan, and we never did use that street, so, um, but um, last year we went down farther towards the sailing club on the property, and there's there's still quite a bit of room there, and actually in front of watermark so but yeah we i i guess we'll get to a point where you either limit it or great problem to have yeah mm -hmm. so isn't it <coughs> councillor king oh, thank you uh, gary thanks for your group for putting on such a great event i guess just kind of tweaking your budget or looking at it you've kind of increased your budget for marketing and i'm just wondering if you've talked to do because their mandate is to help different groups market in this mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. town so I'm just wondering if some of the costs could go towards this jump instead of marketing. Um, last year, we actually got uh, promotion money, advertising money from Destination Asuyas, and I think in, in discussions last year, it was that we just came to town council primarily for the jump. the funding for that particular event, uh, and I we will have a meeting coming up with the Do and Kelly here shortly. I just actually talked to her today so okay find out what's going on there so and you know we, we talked a bit to like I said it was it was good to have Gerald at our last meeting to kind of put some of the things in perspective as well so, <coughs> so. good well thank you very much right. we we're quite familiar with uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll oh, abs absolutely mm -hmm. councillor Rhodes go ahead uh, thank you very much uh, Thanks, Gary. Uh, good, good information. I'm, I'm happy to see that you came out last year a little bit on the positive number-wise. And uh, I wanted to uh, just ask, and you touched a little bit in your in your report about um, you know numbers of vehicles uh, over uh, this year and possibly a little bit into the future. I wonder if you can just enlighten us a little bit on how you feel beyond this year and the numbers that are going to, uh, to to be part of your planning over over a longer period of time. We do so much of our planning on a five-year basis, and it would be good, good to hear some of your comments about where you think you will be, you know, over that time period. Um, thanks, CJ. Well, I think working with Gail at Destination C is one of the first things she did was that we <clears throat> have a five-year plan. And uh, we were a little off the mark in the first year because I think we figured there was normally about 1,500 spectators, not maybe 5,000. And uh, we talked about 150 cars, and we were just kind of having a, you know, just kind of a reasonable growth of, you know, we picked 10%. But in we certainly sort of, we, we certainly have grown faster than that in the last um couple of years I you know it I don't know if I'd really want to get to the 1100 that I saw in Victoria mm -hmm. it is an awful lot but I, I mean it was 
the place is sold out, right? I mean, there wasn't a hotel to be had in Victoria six months prior to the event. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the benefit to the town is amazing. So, CJ, uh, just a reasonable amount. I think once we get to the 300 where we were at pretty well last year, you know, we, we're going to have to start looking at, you know, where else we go. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens this year. Uh, we have had a couple of comments, just, you know, how, how things change. And, and uh, a couple of groups have said they're interested in coming because of the Canadian dollar. Mm -hmm. People from Cranbrook who typically go across the line contacted us and said, you know, we've probably got 15 plus cars and we're thinking of coming your way because it's th the U.S. dollar. So, Can I ask, um, in, in the Vancouver Sun or province, uh, it, during that time of year, they often on a Saturday will list all of the car shows that you go to around the province, and there seems to be numerous ones mm -hmm. on each weekend. Is there, does that cause any kind of concern for anybody specifically organizing one, or do you get together and say, I'll have it this week and mm -hmm. you have it next? Uh, um, because um, you can't be at everything. I mean, somebody who has one of these fancy cars, maybe they do. Maybe they go mm -hmm. each weekend, do they? Mm -hmm. um, oh. there, there, are, there are really some major events, and it's always nice not to compete with some of those. But, I mean, as you, sa as you said, there's, there seems like there's hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. and on any given weekend, you go to three mm -hmm. different places. Um, and I know from some of the people that go around, I mean, some of them don't like to go to the same show every year. They would rather go to somewhere else. Okay. So, Pick and choose. but we had a group came up last year, first time from Vancouver, from the Lower Mainland. They came up with ten cars, and they say they're going to be this year with fifteen or sixteen. They had a good time, and they just okay. enjoyed the weekend. And uh, I think you know, the city has a lot to offer. And I mean, they were parked right on the beach downtown. They, I mean, they thought it was wonderful. Heaven, of course. <laughs> so you know, I mean, we offer a lot. Some of those. I mean, if you go to some of those shows, they'll be in a parking lot of a car dealership. Yeah. You know, do you want to stand out on asphalt? I mean, you know, they do, but so. Well, we know that you, uh, that your group puts a lot of effort uh, into this, and, um, and I'm sure it'll be successful again. So thank, thank you. you for your presentation. We'll certainly look at it further. Thank you. And now we have um, Shirley Baker from the Suez Festival Society. Uh, thank you for having me, Sue, and counselors, and everybody that's still here. Hmm. Because I'm not just asking for some money, I always can look for resources for the Soyuz <laughs> festivals. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Shirley Baker from 3400 Lobelia Drive. And this year being the 150th anniversary of Canada, um, we're looking for some addi additional funding. So I should have maybe sent something out sooner, but put it together today kind of thing. I'll give you some copies. Usually in the past, we've been asking for around $6,000 to support a Soyuz Festival Society. Three events, Jerry Fiesta, the Christmas Light Up, and Easter Extravaganza. This year, we're asking for an additional $3,400. And the way we would spend that is... We last year got um, a surprise, I guess, at the end that we had to pay for our ambulance service, and it came in around $900. So we're looking to increase our <coughs> grant funding for by that num amount. And then the 150th, we're thinking about decorations for Canada Day and asking for $500 for that. Canada Day special entertainment, like we do entertainment, as everybody knows, from noon right through to the fireworks. And it's expensive to bring bands in, and we're looking to maybe up scale a couple bands and add an additional $1,000 to accommodate that. And then our float, which has seen better days, <laughs> needs a bit of rejuvenation, and um, we would... We're planning to do that yeah, anyways, yeah, but <laughs> we would put um, a lot of effort and work into making it uh, appear for the 150th also by adding some additional stuff to it. So those are the three things 
or the four things that we're really looking for additional funding for. I won't take a lot of your time. You mm. can ask me some questions, but. Absolutely. Councillor King. No, thank you, Madam Mayor. I guess with the Canada 150, and I know you applied for the federal grant, did they happen to up the opportunity to ask for more money there, do you know? They huh. did a little bit, but not much. So I went for as much as we could get, and I applied for it back in November. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, I know that you, the Cities Festival Society will also apply for the grant need and yes, fill that aid. in. Yes. It's just um, nice to know um, that um, these things, we like to have as much information Rachel, as we can yeah, understand earlier. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, so thank you very much for this, and it's um, short and sweet, sweet. and we can yeah. see what you need it for. Quick question. Yeah. Absolutely, Certainly. Councillor Campbell. So I, I know that, that the volunteer base has dwindled a little bit and there's a lot yes. less people doing just as much or more work. Right. Is there an opportunity, have we attempted to work with the high schools with yes, trying to have. bring? Yes, yeah. we have to bring them in and we've had a bit of success but not a lot. Right. And I guess the par problem is that we have a lot of pre-planning and stuff that needs to be done. And it's difficult to get a student to be part of that. Right. We can may bring in maybe a couple of students to help us the day of, mm -hmm. but it's difficult to get someone that's kind of on board to help with the pre-planning of the stuff that needs to go into getting the day set up and running. Right. And has there been, um, going away from the students for a moment, using uh, resources like the Soyuz Loop, has there been any promoting the, the need for, for yes, volunteers yeah. through there? Last year um, I went with the paper. I got an in with the paper, as you know. <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> we did an article uh, about needing resources and uh, volunteers. And we did have at our general meeting uh, several people that came out that expressed interest. And um, over the next three or four months that number dwindled off to about two or three stuck and the rest kind of went by the wayside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it obviously concerns me because of the amazing things uh, that come yeah, out of this society. Yeah, there's only a small core of us that, mm -hmm. that make yeah, it happen. I'd encourage you to continue on, on social media platforms. Yes, that's a good uh, idea. This community definitely yeah. engages Yes, uh, exactly. I think that what happens is um, You've got people in their 40s and 50s that are volunteering for a lot of things that their kids are involved in. Mm -hmm. And so they, they feel that they've given their time and that's all the time they have. And then you get up into our age group and then they've got other interests and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you just don't see Pickleball, that. Pickleball, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't see that same interest, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah. So we appreciate uh, you coming tonight, Shirley, and yeah, to fill thanks. us in on this. Thank you yes, very much. Yes, I kept it short and sweet, but that's, it's kind that's of good. you know what festivals Just what we about. need. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And um, the next one on our list is Patty Head. Is Patty here? Yep. Yeah. She is. Okay. A little short. You probably you didn't, didn't see, see you so behind there. Mm -hmm. um, good evening. My name is... Patty Head, and I live at 3623 Sawgrass Drive. I wrote it down so it's very proper. Um, good evening, Mayor. Good evening, uh, Councillors and Mr. Romenko. Um, I'm here representing uh, Desert Park Exhibition Society. I would like to talk specifically about um, one event that we will be having on the May long weekend. Um, we did have our inaugural medieval joust on the May long weekend in 2016. <clears throat> Last year, I actually only had uh, approximately <coughs> one month to organize it, to advertise it, and in spite of the fact that I really didn't have very much time, we managed to get 1,200 people to come through the gate. I think mainly because the Medieval Games is sort of a unique, it's a very different event. And um, so we did very well last year, however I did, I was not able to create the medieval village that I wanted. We did have the jousters. 
So this year we are starting well ahead of time. Um, we are going to create the village um, along with the, with the joust. And so to help us pay for that this year, um, we are asking the council if they would give us um, an additional $5,000 to um, help. Um, the one thing that uh, I know, uh, unfortunately, a lot of the locals are either working because it is the May long weekend or they go camping, apparently. Um, but when we asked everybody in the audience where they came from, well over half were tourists. Some of them had come from across the border um, because we did do radio advertising and I do believe that that really helped us. So it uh, got us a lot of people. So um, that is actually what we are asking for. Um, and. Now, my, I have a volunteer who does our um, applying for grants. Um, I try to keep up with her. She's very difficult to keep up with. She has applied for many, many grants. <coughs> now, um, she has applied for the South Okanagan Similkameen Community Foundation grant, um, but because Desert Park is not a charity. We are a not-for-profit. Um, apparently, we have to ask the town to sponsor this grant. Um, I wish I could give you all the particulars on this grant, but I really do not know all of them. Um, I believe we have submitted a letter to Mr. Bermanko explaining. Um, so I'll no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so this is basically, I am going to try and keep it short. This is what we are asking for. We, um, we now have our five-year uh, license of operation. And um, I really do believe that the medieval fair will become <coughs> an annual event here in Asoyas. And we certainly plan on making it bigger and better every year. Good. Thank you. Yes. A couple questions. Uh, I guess that's the first I've, I've heard of that as far as grant applications. Is that, does that seem right? We got one. That's where we got our. Uh, but being a, being a non prop, I guess not registered charity, but being a non profit society. Is that the way I heard that? Yes, that was for, that was um, a separate one for mm -hmm. the. Um, Community Foundation South Okanagan. Oh, so maybe that's just their their that's criteria. Their funding their criteria. criteria. Okay. There'll be there'll be a report coming to council on February sixth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any questions about that? Um, I attended last year up at Desert Park, and it was kind of fun to see them um, jousting, although. I wouldn't be out there, but it was, no, it was fun, <laughs> fun to watch. Either. Yeah. Um, so um, we wish you well, and we will certainly have a look at um, at your ask and okay. see if we can um, we can fit it in. Okay. okay. So and th you will dress up and come. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> what if we supplied the costume? Well, I'll I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Um, was there anyone else? That's uh, seated here today. That had that wanted to to speak, or we haven't spoken about your issue. No. Okay. Well, I have two letters here. Um, one of them is from the um, uh, the the uh, PAC, the Parents Advisory Council from the elementary school, and they have a PAC meeting tonight. And guess what? They're having trouble getting people to sit on their executive. Um, and so they didn't want to um, have anybody um, come to this meeting when they needed to be there. So they have written a letter, and I'm going to read it to you. Dear Mayor and Council, at Asuyas Elementary School, we strive to equip all our students with the solid foundation they need to be successful in school and in life. We do our very best to foster a strong and supportive learning environment. The Asuyas Elementary School 
Parent Advisory Council believes that this learning occurs both in the classroom and outside the classroom. The Asurius Elementary School PAC is currently fundraising to replace the lower elementary school playground. Our vision for the new playground is to add natural elements within the play structure area. We hope that by using natural elements, students and children in the community will connect to, connect to the environment that they play in. Natural play areas encourage kids to interact with others, building their social skills and imaginations. Nature playgrounds also assist children with fine motor development by the nature that, is, that they are built. Nature playgrounds in, typically include the following elements, rolling, topography, boulders, logs, pathways, as well as large trees and shrubs. Successful nature playgrounds with these in Included elements allow children to use their imaginations to create games and play with others instead of arriving at a traditional playground that's equipment and function is already designed for you. Advocates of nature playgrounds have shown that these play spaces assist children with the development of social skills, cooperation, and the ability to solve problems. In addition, natural playgrounds stimulate a child's imagination and creativity more than a traditional playground. As a parent group, the PAC believes that the entire community benefits when play spaces are added to the community. This playground will be used by students, families in the community, as well as visitors to our area. We have been actively fundraising for the last two years, and the project is now in its final stages of securing enough funding for the playground to be developed. We hope that the Town of Asuias can assist us with this important project for our community. The Asuias Elementary PAC is seeking $5,000 from the Town of Asuias to complete this project. And, um, and it's from Danielle Higginson, and she's the treasurer, and she has included um, a few pictures that, uh, that would like to be included. And while I was reading this, m what occurred to me is that if this goes in at the Asuias Playground, next door is the Child Care Center, where there's another playground wanting to go in, and next door at the at the water park there's another playground going in yes. that would be three in in a very short uh, probably for different uh, uh, ages and uh, and so on but that's interesting to think that they'd all be within a very short uh, space and it's a, it's a very good observation and I yeah. think maybe we've got to take a step back and yeah, and look at that all and, and take a look at that uh, in terms of uh, you know how to best use uh, yes uh, <laughs> having three playgrounds within spitting distance. <laughs> anyway, that was one. That was one letter from the pack, and the second one was uh, arrived this afternoon, and it is um, uh, Mayor and Councillors of, of the Town of Vesuvius. Dear Mayor McCordoff and Councillors, read your special budget capital plan meeting Monday, J January the 16th at Town Hall. I am asking respectfully as a council watchdog that a serious council to show fiscal responsibility, openness, as well as accountability with taxpayer money over the next two years. Number one, if town council wants to save taxpayer money, stop paying exorbitant engineering and consulting fees. Hire full-time civil engineer with planning experience. Number two, Town of Asuias has three full-time planners on the payroll. Please do something about it. We can't afford because it's too costly for the taxpayer. I would like this letter to be part of the special open meeting for January the 16th. Further, it has been reported in Asuias this week. You stated, we'll take ideas back as we continue our budget meetings to decide what we can afford and what's the highest priority. Thank you for your consideration in this matter. Sincerely, Cy Marcelli, who is, always signs it as the council watchdog. So um, I know that... Um, uh, Mr. Romanko would like to. Uh, I'd just like to, uh, for the record, clarify because I think it's important that uh, when information comes out that there's clarity relative to uh, what's being presented. Uh, first of all, we do not have three planners in our planning department. Uh, we have a building inspector and he's also our fire inspector, so I'm assuming that's one of uh, the positions that's being uh, called a community planner. 
We do have two other uh, people in our planning department with planning designations, but uh, uh, one of them very, very much is uh, targeted as a development officer and dealing with their, uh, all our development applications. Uh, being a small municipality, uh, we wear many hats, and uh, uh, these planners also work on projects uh, that uh, enable that are, wouldn't be considered normal planning work. And I'll give you some examples uh, that uh, in the last few years, all our all our work uh, related to the, the Gyro Park uh, uh, redevelopment, also our Southeast Metal Arc Richter property, were all led by people with our with very good planning, uh, uh, in, you know, positions and and experience. So, uh, you know, I, I just that I think that needs to be uh, as a point of record uh, in rebuttal to what what's there. The second one that relates to our our uh, our uh, engineering fees. Uh, we, we have engineering fees that fall in two categories. Uh, the first is being general consultation relative to assisting us with development projects and how we uh, uh, would, would engineer various areas, as well as general, just general cons consultation. That amount for last year was $32,400. Uh, we do have additional engineering fees, but they're all very specific capitally related projects and no municipality of this size in fact even penticton doesn't keep all engineering staff on they rely on uh, on hiring engineering companies that have the multitasking the many uh, many civil departments that of engineering that are needed to carry out many of our projects so uh, we you know I, I thank mr. Marcelli for his comments but I'd like to add that as a matter of com uh, clarification yeah, thank you very much, and I believe that we have um, we've dealt with this before uh, under the same uh, the same topic. So um, thank you for clarifying that, uh, Mr. Romanko. Um, from my point of view, we have um, we we do not have any other business to deal with uh, tonight. I just want to thank all of you for coming and for participating in this. And as you can see, we have a wide variety. Of items that um, uh, that people would love to spend your and our money uh, doing and so we're going to have to look at them all very carefully so thank you all for coming and I will um, adjourn the meeting at 830 I don't need a motion for that no thank you very much thank you, thank you uh, Councillor Rhodes for um, for participating